enjoying uh, these weekly talks with you. And today, Zach, you and I, we're going to talk about something that I'll be honest with you on the surface sounds really dull and boring to me. Um, but hopefully we'll make it a little more interesting. Um, this concept of what we call account aggregation. What is it? Why does it matter? Is it safe? Um, we're going to talk about that today. And I, I thought I would, I would start off by just uh, kind of using an analogy. Um, we, we bought a car recently for my wife and um, one of the main reasons she wanted to get another car was because hers uh, didn't have uh, the technology in it, her old one, of, of just doing something that we all kind of take for granted today, and that's having your phone connect by Bluetooth to, to your, uh, your car, and that allows you to you know, talk on your phone without hands, and it also allows you to stream music, those kinds of things. And I was thinking about, as we were gonna be talking about this today, Zach, um, just like in the world of cars and technology, you, you will often see in, in the, the constant, uh, <laughs> the game of trying to make you want what you don't have. They'll, they'll roll out all kinds of new gadgets and features and bells and whistles. And, you know, we're all human and we're all, uh, we're all distracted by the shiny objects, but uh, we've also all e re experienced that uh, sometimes with the passage of time, you look back and, and you had the shiny object and it, it really ended up being a pain or it didn't work as well as you thought it would, or it just didn't matter. Um, but something like Bluetooth comes along in that connectivity to your smartphone, which you pretty much always have with you, all of a sudden that became something that apparently, according to my wife, is a must have today. Um, I know that you're an exception to this, Zach. You'll buy the old car and then you'll retrofit it with technology because you're a car guy. But the rest of us mortals, uh, that's, that's not our reality. Uh, but, you know, I guess I was thinking about this aggregation feature. Um, you know, we have come a long way in 30, 35 years on technology, and, and we're constantly seeing in our business uh, bells and whistles. And, and it always is interesting, but the question is, is it really going to be something like, like Bluetooth and automobiles? Is it really going to be something that, that sticks and makes a long-term, uh, and is a long-term benefit to people? Um, and, and really, that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, we're going to kind of talk about what is it, how does it work, and and uh, is it safe, of course, but then the bottom line is, do, does it really matter or is this just a shiny object um, mm -hmm. that we're talking about? So I'm going to start off by kicking it over to you, Zach, just to kind of answer the most obvious question. What is account aggregation? Uh, just kind of break it down for us a little bit. Well, account aggregation on the most basic level is just uh, it's, it's taking information from a lot of various sources in different places and pulling them all together in a single location. And um, that might be uh, account values or actual um, you know, uh, information related to a specific holding, um, or it might be just uh, performance information, all of that data just coming into one location. So. Um, it's really a, a modern part of connectivity with, with everything that we have going on in the world, with everybody wanting to have access to information more quickly and uh, be able to make decisions easier based on that information. Um, aggregation, at least in a, in a financial sense, is bringing all of that account information together rather than having to bounce around to okay. 10, 15 different spots. Right. And so we're, we're talking about you know, in our, in our business, we, we directly manage money for clients, obviously. Um, and, and so there's, there's that group of accounts in somebody's life that works with us. But even if we uh, manage a lot of uh, clients' money, we don't necessarily manage everything. And we certainly don't manage their bank holdings uh, very often and things like that. So what we're talking about here is the ability to go out and connect all of these assets, anything that can be logged into online, basically, with a username and a password, um, for the most part, has an ability now to be connected to a single source. And, um, and so that, that's basically what we're talking about here with account aggregation. Um, we're going to get, and I know right now it's just the two of us talking this through, and 
most people are visual. And so we're going to show you a couple of examples um, here in a bit. But we thought we would, we would first kind of go through some of the basics on this. And then, then we'll illustrate it by showing you the, the two portals that we currently use in our practice uh, to, to help clients uh, really simplify their situation. So um, that's a little bit about what account aggregation is. I guess the next basic question is, well, why does it matter? Uh, I would say, Zach, that three things that we're really focused on in, in our process with clients, you know, we're trying to improve people's lives. We want to help inspire generosity. Well, how do we do that? Well, we really focus on three things consistently. One is clarity, another is simplicity, and a third is delegation. In my personal experience over the years, and, in, and as I've observed in clients' lives, the quality of your life tends to go up with more clarity, more simplicity, and, and delegating things that are not maybe your passion, <laughs> or they're really important that they get done right. So this, this idea of aggregation falls squarely into this area of simplicity, in my opinion. Um, there's just a personal convenience we've seen uh, I know we were talking before the show went live about some real examples of what that looks like. Um, I don't know if you have an example or two that, that you remember from our discussion, but I mean, you do, you do annual reviews all the time in our practice. What jumps out to you is just a convenience factor with this for clients who have their holdings connected versus those who don't. Well, we've seen quite a few instances where, our clients that have chosen to aggregate everything have really benefited from that. And there's, there's two uh, situations where we see that often. One is um, if somebody is doing, uh, they're purchasing a major piece of property, real estate, uh, maybe they're applying for a mortgage or they're, they're some kind of loan. And a lot of times when they're doing the underwriting, I mean, most of us on the call uh, have applied for some type of loan. Um, a mortgage, something else. And the lender has said, Hey, we just need a rundown. We need a balance sheet. Um, a lot of times they'll accept that rather than specific statements for each thing. And so for uh, the people that we work with that have chosen to aggregate it, they've sent us an email and they've said, Hey, you know, we just need a rundown of everything, you know, click a few buttons and you know, it just spits it out. So that's been really helpful. Um, the other thing is whenever you get into some estate planning, sometimes an attorney will want to see, um, hey, I just want a rundown of all the assets. Maybe you have some things that need to go into a trust and they would just want to make sure that everything gets in there or things have the right beneficiaries and titling. Um, and so that's another time period whenever something like that can be really useful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, it's not only a list of all the accounts, but it, they're, they're live real values within mm -hmm. maybe the last 24 hours for everything that's linked. Um, right. On the advisor side, uh, it, it really helps us in several ways. I think about, let's say, somebody who's, who's new to working with us. Um, for years, we've had to collect a lot of paper up front because one of the first things we have to do is kind of understand, okay, what's here to work with? And used to, the only way we could do that was get a statement. Um, and now though, if, if, if it's uh, something that can be linked in by aggregation right from the beginning, we don't need that statement necessarily anymore. We can, we can see exactly what the values are, we, and we can see exactly how they're invested right now. And that allows us to go in and really start thinking in a practical way about what's the level of risk they're taking now versus the level of risk they said they're really comfortable with. Nine out of 10 times, those usually aren't aligned when we first meet somebody. Um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it also, um, uh, for clients who've been working with us for a long time, they may have most of their assets with us, but they might still have that 401k balance or something like that. And every year when we would do our annual reviews in the past, we would have to ask them, so, so tell us again, how much is in that 401k plan and, and how's it invested? And it's just inefficient. You're, you're having a conversation that you may or maybe already had two or three times in prior years. But if that account's been linked, then we don't have to ask them what it's worth and we don't have to ask them how's it invested. And that lets us be more proactive about looking at it and seeing, okay, does this still seem to be in line with where we were a year ago, it, or has, have things gotten kind of out of whack here? It just, it speeds things up, it simplifies things. So we think it's, it's great on the client side of things for simplicity, 
And, um, and we think it's great on our side. We, it puts us in a better position to be proactive about the advice we give and, 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 and frankly, just less hassle for the client when we're doing our reviews. But there's a third major advantage, Zach, and I'll let you speak about this, um, because we're right in the middle of one of these times. And, and, that, and, and you and I have been on the phone a lot the last 90 days talking with clients. Uh, speak about how, how it helps us uh, kind of keep, keep people grounded during times of volatile markets like this. Yeah, um, you know, in the last three months, we've all experienced uh, quite a market event and uh, very quick movement in the market, not, not necessarily the biggest move uh, that the market's ever made, but in the time frame that it happened, it was huge. And when we get in moments like that, it, uh, there's a lot of unsettling that can happen. And it's easy to become unsettled. You, we're all being bombarded by, by news that is bad and, and creates anxiety. And, um, you know, whether it's looking at a statement or looking online, if we just look at a specific account and we just say, oh, you know, I had a, uh, my account went down $1,000. Well, if it's a $10,000 account, then that's 10%. If it's a $100,000 account, that's a 1% drop, not a big deal. So being able to, to view things um, in, in a way where you see the bigger picture can really help settle uh, uh, the anxieties about situations. Um, we always like to come back to the plan, and you guys have heard us talk about that over the last uh, couple months, but, um, you know, when it comes to stability, it's not really your account values that were, that at the end of the day really matter that we're trying to stabilize. It's your financial well-being that is the most important. We want to, we want to make sure, we want to help you uh, do the best job that you can to make sure that whatever the market's doing, your household, your finances are stable and you, you feel secure. And so uh, if it's just a single account we're looking at, it's, that's not very representative of your situation. But if we have accounts aggregated where you know, it's a retirement plan at work and it's this annuity over here that we're not, um, you know, maybe it's a legacy account that you have or something like that, then when we tie all that together, we can go back and look at the plan and say, hey, uh, you know, we looked at this six months ago and where your values were and we knew everything was all right. Let's jump in right now. We know that all the values are up to date in the last 24 hours. And so let's see how things look if the account values are just depressed 20% or 10% or whatever it might be. So um, if we can do that, then we can very quickly go back and say, hey, even with the 5% drop or the 10% drop that we've seen, we, we can project out. We know you're still going to be fine. Yeah, and that is huge. Uh, and, and I will say we had a few uh, clients uh, three or four weeks into this sell-off. You know, the market fell 30% in 18 days. That is really fast. And um, so we were talking to some clients early on and showing them the plan, and, and we made some decisions to make some changes um, on where they were pulling money from, how they were pulling it. So it, but, but again, it was in the context of the whole picture. And that's mm -hmm. what's so valuable about this. Um, it just really helps you make wise decisions when you've got all the information in a current form. So, so Zach, let's shift gears and talk about something. And, and you're, you really stay, you pay a lot of attention to this, I know. Um, but Probably the most common question we get when we first talk about aggregation with somebody uh, in our firm is, is it, it how safe is it? Um, how secure is it? So yeah, speak a little bit about that and, and, and kind of also maybe touch on the, the couple of different ways that these accounts actually get linked and what that means. Right. Yeah, security is a huge, a huge thing. And um, if you're on this webinar, I'm, I'm going to make the assumption that you're, you're from comfortable with, uh, comfortable enough on a computer that you probably do online banking. You probably have a login, um, and hopefully you feel secure with that and and comfortable and confident that you don't you don't have to worry. Um, the question, of course, is if you have that, would it be possible to aggregate things? and bring them all into a central location and it have, have it be just as secure? And the answer is yes. 
Um, and the, the systems, the, the two portals that we use for aggregation, they have uh, encryption on them, 256-bit encrypt, encryption. Um, that is really heavy-duty encryption. Uh, another major piece of the security puzzle, uh, a lot of you may have heard of multi-factor authentication. And what that does is it creates, basically, instead of just having one credential that's needed to access the information, uh, once that one credential is met, then there's a secondary credential that's needed. And so it's creating multiple uh, keys or, or, or uh, systems that block getting into that. And the cool thing about the portals that you guys have with us is that they use something called adaptive multi-factor authentication and what that means is it learns about your situation um, and it, it kind of monitors how you behave on your computer your login preferences where you're located geographically how often you log in and based on a number of algorithms determines okay hey this is a, a low risk scenario or high risk scenario and so it will it will either increase the security um, or it will actually lower it a little bit. So uh, many of you we've spoken with, we set up your account and you had to type in the six digit code here and there. And then we talked about, hey, if you log in at the same computer routinely a few times, it will learn, hey, this computer's safe. And then it will, it will make the security a little more convenient for you. Um, and then it, it's, that's also uh, the opposite can happen. So if the, the portal senses, hey, um, you know, you're logging in at a coffee shop uh, in Estonia uh, at 1.30 in the morning, U.S. time. It's going to say, hey, uh, we're going we're gonna to overload you with security because it's not going to trust that that's you. So adaptive MFA is just really um, making sure that, hey, based on what we know about your login preferences, should we up the security or maybe be a little bit more relaxed on it? Yeah, what so. could possibly be wrong with Estonia at 1.30 a.m.? I don't know. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> well, okay, so, so yeah, I mean, suffice to say that this, this is a very, very serious part of, of all of this. It's got to be secure. We know that. And, um, you know, our, 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 our encryption uh, standards are as high as, uh, I, I would venture to say, the banks out there. Um, and, and, mm -hmm. and so we feel very comfortable with it. But a lot of times when something's new, um, you know, people are, are cautious about it. So um, I thought it was important that we kind of touched on that. Okay, so let's shift gears and let's actually look at a couple of um, of the portals that we use, Zach, and talk about, uh, you know, kind of wrap this up today with with making this more visual. Uh, we, I think we've kind of taken them through some of the reasons why uh, aggregation can matter uh, and, and be helpful to, to client as well as to us. Uh, we do think that this is going to be a, not just a shiny object. We think this is going to increasingly become uh, something that people start to take for granted in their lives once they realize the advantages of kind of having their whole financial life in a, in a single pane of glass, as I hear many people describe it. Um, and having one place where you can go and get your statements and see your, your confirmations and see your whole picture and uh, including your loans and all of that as this technology continues to evolve and get better and better and better, folks are going to start to expect that. It's going to be part of their normal. Uh, we're really kind of on the cutting edge, I think, in our, in our Carson partner relationship of bringing those tools to the forefront. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to share my screen and, and just start with our website and, and just give people a visual. Um, you seeing that okay, Zach? Looks good. So, so most of you have been to our website. If you if you go there and you say, well, how do I get to these portals? Well, there's a little place here, the client login. You would just click on that. And um, we, we have today three portals that are live, but it's all moving to this one on the left. And, and it'll be, I don't know, maybe another year or two before we uh, really have, have got everything where we're heading. But today we're going to look at um, the plan portal view and we're also going to look at the client experience view we call that in in our office the cx portal uh, but if you were to click on this plan portal this is actually a tool zach we've been using for a number of years but it, it's it's had for a number of years this aggregation capability 
Um, and, and so if you logged in to that portal, you would essentially see something like this. Uh, now this is our good friends, Fred and, uh, Fred and Wilma Flintstone. We talked about them last week. And you see at a high level here, their net worth and their investments. But if you, if you think about the aggregation, if you go over here to the organizer tab, you would, um, you would, you would click on accounts and you would, you would see um, all of the different accounts that are in their portal right now. Some of these have been entered manually. Uh, and, and so like uh, you might have uh, here, see how the date is 12, 14, 2011. And they had 50,000 of cash in their bank account at the time and we didn't have it linked. So that's a great example. We have no idea when we do an annual review if, if that 50,000 is still there. Uh, did they spend it? Is it now 200,000? We don't know. Um, but if it was linked, uh, like, like this E-Trade account is, we have values in there as of a couple of days ago because it was updated by aggregation. Uh, and you can also, uh, more and more, we're finding insurance products out there are able to be linked. Um, you're also able to link in uh, mortgage loans and things. This one is, is just showing a static amount, but it is uh, more and more often now we're able to, to connect debts. So one way we've been using aggregation for years has been through this portal. Um, and it's really fairly easy for a client to log in and once they see where to go to make the connection. Um, themselves of, of accounts. Um, anything you want to add about that before we look at the CX portal, Zach? Yeah, it doesn't show it in this this sample uh, screen that we're on right here, but normally in the top right, it would have a, a button that just says add accounts, and many of you have, have used that to add your accounts, but you just click that and it pulls up a window and you can search for your, your financial firm. Um, it has pretty much all the major banks, all the major financial institutions, and all it takes is just entering your username and password. And there is usually a, you know, there might be a code or something that's sent, but once you, you click connect, it basically links that and will pull in the value. Um, on its most basic level, what it's doing is when you give it access, it's going out and it's actually just looking at the account value on a certain part of the screen. And that's like a, it's called screen scraping. And so it's just going in, you're, you're basically granted access and then the portal goes in and, and grabs that value and pulls it. Um, but more and more, uh, we see not just a one-way information grab, but financial institutions are starting to um, use a technology called API, which instead of it being a one-way uh, grab of information, it's basically a, a symbiotic two-way uh, back and forth of information. And so in those cases with most of the major banks, for instance, um, they now have that API connection. And so the information is not just being pulled from the bank, but it can be pushed and moved back, back and forth, just the data. Um, and so uh, there's, let, let me, let me just, we didn't, we didn't get into that during the secure thing. Just tell me, is that safe? Because if, if you're pulling information back and forth, what, what can and cannot be done with, through these connections? I guess if I was a client, I would want to know that. Can they go in and, and make changes in my account? Right. No, there's no changes that can be made. So for instance, in a, a bank account, there's, there's no information or um, there's no withdrawals or deposits. There's no movement of the money that can happen. Things cannot be bought or sold. Um, it's, it's a purely an exchange of, information it's no no action can be taken on the account itself or or the holdings within the account okay well and before we leave here i just do want to highlight one other thing kind of off topic but this vault area in here is something that we have used a lot in the past and if you happen to be on the call and you're you're just now beginning to work with us you you're very familiar with this feature because we're really encouraging you to take advantage of this as a simple way to get us your documents you can upload directly into this vault once we set up your profile. But maybe we'll, have, maybe we'll have that as a subject of a different conversation. Before we run out of time, we got about five minutes, I wanna end by looking at where this is all heading. Um, 
I'll go back to the website. If, if you clicked on the client experience and you're already a client, this is only available to clients. Um, this is where we're heading with all of this, Zach. And, um, and this is going to become that, that one place where our clients go and they can get increasingly all the information that they, they want. Uh, but a big part of what's gonna make this work is going to be, again, account aggregation. So, uh, you know, in the, in the last four or five minutes we've got, why don't you kinda, I mean, we don't have to plow ground, we've already gone over, I guess, but uh, is there anything unique you'd say about this portal, uh, you know, versus what we just looked at? Yeah, so you can see even on the right side of the screen there, it says under the My Accounts, you can see that uh, their savings accounts, credit cards, checking accounts, all of those are accounts that have been linked. And if you go down under, there's that 3.5 million amount and that button underneath Add Accounts, that's actually how you can go in there. You can connect a bank or any account that you have a login to. You can search by institution by the name of the uh, the financial firm, and then once you click that, it'll allow you to, to put your inform your login information. Um, and it even has small community banks and credit unions, regional banks. Um, it's it's, it's really getting easy to use. Yeah. What's that? It's really easy to use once you know where to go. Yeah, it's getting difficult to find an institution that's not participating in these type of information exchanges these days. So I went in and I just entered Wells Fargo. It popped it up and, and basically I would just, if I, if I bank with Wells, I would enter my username and password. It would go out and, um, and then once the connection was made, all of my account values would start showing up um, and then keep updated daily in my, in my client portal. Yeah, and even the, like a lot of people have, Wells Fargo is a pretty big provider of mortgages in the US. And so it would even pull in a mortgage account that would show as a negative. And then going back uh, on the overview page of the portal, it shows the net worth. And so you can really, you can get the net worth number, it's gonna show up on a balance sheet. Um, there's the, the, the red portion right there next to the coffee cup, it says liabilities. That's um, liabilities. That's usually the, the, the mortgage would contribute towards that amount. Yeah. Um, but there's, those are shortcuts on the, on the right. You can click the accounts tab up top and then, uh, get a, a different view of some of the investment accounts, but, um, it also yeah. gives the ability, some, some people to, to where it says manual accounts, maybe you have, uh, some precious metals or some gold or something that you have in a, a security, uh, box at a, at a bank, you could add that. Uh, even if it's not showing up on, um, even it's not showing up on your portal or login. Yeah, so I don't know if it's going to let me do this on this sample client, but um, precious metals, it's an asset. And if I click save, then I won't do it. But if I click save, then we go back to the, let's just try it and see what happens. We'll live dangerously. How about that? I don't know if it's going to accept it. <laughs> Did it show up? I don't see it. Do you see it? Oh, there it is. Gold Down there bars. Very bottom there gold bars. Yeah. yeah. So that's how easy it can be to put in manual entries. But today, you know, the main thing we're talking about is electronically connecting all of these assets. So I think, I think we've done a pretty good job of giving the high level of this act. Um, I, I honestly think that, uh, you know, just like Bluetooth was at first was just kind of a, Oh, that's, that's nice. Uh, but eventually people realized, oh, this is much better. I can play my, my music streaming service through my radio. I can, I can do you know, hand, hands-free calls. I can even talk to my phone and text through it and all of that. All of a sudden, it became something that is, is now very, very important to people. I really believe this technology going forward is going gonna, is gonna to evolve to that point. And we're really, uh, uh, the Carson Partner Group as a whole, we are really investing heavily in technology to uh, to, 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 to take advantage of this as quickly as possible. Um, this is the future, I think, for us in making mm -hmm. the complex simple. Uh, so with that said, we got about a minute, before, so we need to wrap it up. Anything else you want to say about aggregation before we talk about next week? Yeah, just one, one quick thing about subtotals here. Uh, 
you can see on the right side, it, it's kind of bunching the accounts up into checking and credit card and savings. So it's, it's seeing the type of account and that's something that can be changed manually by us or, or you as a client. But that man, where it says managed account, that 2.89 million mm -hmm. managed accounts uh, is just the, the, the set of accounts, which wise counsel, we would be helping to manage directly. And so it's, it's bunching them up and uh, that would be one way to kind of see a, a subtotal amount there. And then okay. at the bottom, of course, there's the full thing. So some people are interested in, in knowing, you know, how do I see the different chunks and what they add up to? That's really. All right. Well, so we're going to wrap it up, guys. Um, as always, we will encourage you to uh, send your questions to us via email. Uh, we can't, unfortunately, interact with you live during these sessions because of uh, compliance restrictions. But I do see there were a couple of questions submitted to us. We will answer those offline. And um, you can email it to anybody on the team uh, if you've got a particular interest in this technology and, or if you've got questions about anything. Next week, Zach, we're going to talk to um, a really, really smart partner, uh, Brandon Woodard, and he's going to um, deal with some, some, some very important parts of what we call the, the bigger picture of risk management. Uh, Brandon is a partner. Uh, up in uh, our Amar Amarillo office uh, of the Carson Partner Group. And um, we, uh, we really, really respect his knowledge when it comes to insurance. And so I think it'll be a really interesting conversation as we kind of dig into life insurance a little bit and talk about uh, you know, where, where, that is, where that makes sense and, and just some of the things that he brings to the table in that area. Um, I think it'll be a really, really helpful conversation. All right, guys. That's gonna be it for this week. Thanks for being here. And if you have somebody that you think uh, ought to be watching these weekly uh, discussions, tell them about it. We're, we have gone to a once a week email now. Uh, we're, we're trying to again simplify and instead of sending you emails all the time, we're sending out one, one email a week now, unless it's business particularly related to you personally. And so mm -hmm. there'll be an announcement, a reminder each week about this weekly live uh, session. And we've now kind of opened it up to uh, not just clients. That was, that was really something we wanted to do during the height of the COVID stuff, but that's all kind of unwinding now. And so um, these have been a very popular thing that we've been doing and, and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna continue to do them for the foreseeable future, but we also are opening them up now uh, to anybody out there who might wanna sit in and, and listen to us talk about these topics. Hope they're helpful. Hope you guys have a safe and blessed week. We'll see you next week. Bye.